It seems here on YouTube everyone's pretty enamored with proving whether or not God exists, and whether or not a religion is true or false. But people never actually stop to ask themselves about how religion plays into society and how we relate to it on a sociological and anthropological level. And I, for one, with a certain background in cultural studies, in anthropology, and in religious studies, feel I am somewhat qualified to commentate on this, and I want to start a video series on the subject. I'm going to start first with the Marxist perspective, and how Marxist theorists tend to approach religious beliefs, at least earlier on, and I'm going to call this presentation Opium, Jesus, and Social Revolution, Explaining Marxist Social Perspectives on Religion. Now, before that starts, I want to clarify what I mean by Marxism. Marxism doesn't mean fascism, socialism, or liberalism. Fascism might be seen as Marxism's logical end in terms of pragmatic use. For example, the dictatorship of the proletariat turning over into a dictatorship towards the proletariat, whereas Marxism collapses in into fascism. That's arguable, but Marxism is not fascism in itself. Neither is it socialism. Although socialism is a tenet of Marxism, one can be a socialist and not a Marxist. Likewise, liberalism is completely opposed to Marxism on a lot of levels, especially capitalism. Liberals tend to be, in the classical and even in the modern sense, they tend to be pro-government capitalist schools of thought, especially in the new schools where you have direct government interference in the state to keep the state and businesses cooperating together. But this is, is what Marxism is. It's a holistic approach to understanding and achieving collectivist anarchism, essentially through Marxist understandings of economics, philosophy, political studies, all these disciplines. One gets to that end, and one might set up a certain playbook in how we can achieve that end. And there are various schools of Marxism united under the goal of achieving and mapping the social progress of civilizations where we end up getting collectivist anarchist farms. For example, Marxist-Leninism, Stalinism, all these are schools of Marxist thought. Even though Marxists might not agree with one another, they do have a central premise and a central end to get to. Now, religion and early Marxist thought tend to be a very critical look at a social institution. Marx's well-known term, the opiate of the masses, comes from a brilliant essay, to which I will link, called A Contribution to the Critique of Hegel's Philosophy of the Right. Now, the right Hegelians tend to be very religious people, and tend to co-opt a lot of Hegel's mysticism. Marx was more along the lines of a left Hegelian, who criticized that kind of thinking and was a pure materialist. His main uh, attack on religion is that it's a distraction from the true happiness of social revolution that Marxism can bring into the endgame. And it's a push for historical progress to materialism. Although Karl Marx himself did find a lot of connections with the reformers and said like the reformers separated from the Catholic Church, it's time for the Marxists to separate philosophy from religion. So there's a spiritual evolution in a way from religion to philosophical thought. And Engels establishes a break from the utopian socialism of the past, which was actually based on Christian communes, to a scientific and materialistic understanding of what socialism would be. Now, according to Marxist theories, there's two distinctions within society. There is the labor and economic side, which is the base and foundation on which all other structures exist, and then there are the social systems, which are the structures that exist. Religious structures tend to be churches and organized religion groups. Now, as a commodity, we could think of uh, religion as something that's sold to people. For example, the prosperity gospel or mega churches are just two examples that come to mind. One could probably bring up uh, the Catholic Church or the money mullahs make in uh, the Middle East. Any of these things can be brought up as long as there is somebody making a profit in religion. Then there's religion as false consciousness, or going back, the opium of the masses in which it serves to distract people. Although, a better way to define religion probably would be as false hegemony. This is what Antonio Gramasi essentially said it was supposed to be a false sense of negotiation that's going on between the lower and upper classes of society. The upper classes would essentially win out on the end and make the control, but the poorer and lower class still got a say in the matter and still would influence religion as it came to be a social institution. Now. Marxist thought does offer two very positive aspects. It tries to gauge in the effects of religion as a whole. 
it essentially tries to see how it connects to class structures and other social structures. And it tries to connect religion holistically in terms of social thought and progression of society, which is also pretty good because it helps us understand that religion too evolves along with the rest of society. But here are some negative aspects. It kind of has a monolithic definition of what religion is, maybe as a very supernatural entity. Unitarian Universalists kind of shed that distinction, and really there's also no solid line between philosophy and religion, as you religions have utilized philosophy to get theology, and philosophy has utilized very mystic religious concepts in order to propagate philosophical ideas. And religion is not always institutional. Some religious beliefs can be very private to the individual, especially here in the Western societies. And religion can also be a source of positive conflict and social progression. For example, liberation theology has been brought up quite a bit, and uh, the social gospel here in North America. In any case, Marxism does give us some good social insight. You can be a Marxist in terms of understanding religion and kind of ignore the other stuff if you like, but I personally see no reason why Marxism should be the solitary way to understand religion. And it's kind of the attitude some non-believers take to what religion is as being all around harmful. But that's the end of my presentation. I encourage debate and discussion on the comments below. Uh, sharing your opinions, please share this video.